almost a decade, a coalition of nations across the globe, Ukraine, Germany, and the United States have been chasing the network known as Emotet. The world's most dangerous malware, Emotet has plagued the internet since 2014. Emotet's sophisticated infrastructure makes them impossible to catch, moving their servers from place to place to avoid detection. You don't feel the long nights because this goal is keeping you going, is keeping you focused. Although I work for the Dutch police, I feel that I'm part of the world police. I will take my part in internationally hunt down cyber criminals if they attack any country. The best way to put what Emotet is, is to compare it to medieval warfare. Like if you have gone and stolen like 20 of an enemy's catapults. And rather than necessarily turning the catapults around on that enemy again, you trundle them off and start selling access to the buckets and targeting mechanisms to anybody who comes along. From the point of the accountant, everything was perfectly normal. It was a normal business case, a partner sending an inquiry to check data. It was almost impossible to detect as an attack. It was a reply to one of his earlier emails asking to recheck the contact details. So he had to open an attached document, what he did, and by doing so, he was asked to click on enable content. He did that too. And by that, he was infecting his system with emotets. So they are professionals. They're, they're looking at this in a professional way. And emotet has one part of this infrastructure. They're the people who have hundreds of thousands of computers under their control. And they're looking at who might find that useful. The malware spread in the whole network. The Active Directory was totally compromised. The attackers gained domain admin credentials, so they were kings in the networks. They could do whatever they wanted, and we found that a couple of hundred systems were infected. There were projects delayed, people who were not able to do their work. In the end, we had to burn it all down and build up from scratch. We are talking about damage way beyond 100,000 euros. Emotet sort of commoditized the buying and selling, sort of like a market trade in goods for access to computers. If you wanted to, you could open up your web browser in the dark web and literally type in Emotet, or hacker for hire, or malware marketplaces, Bitcoin stealer, and you'd have results. This computer's compromised. Does anyone else want it so they can have ransomware, so they can turn it into a botnet or a cryptocurrency miner, so they can deface the website? The personality of Emotet is not Lucky Luciano. It's not Bugsy Siegel. The personality is Meyer Lansky. This was the mob's accountant. It wasn't the mob itself. Emotet is the background facilitator that makes stuff happen, but not usually the actual person committing the crimes. It's why it's so hard to pin down the originators of the network and why it took this concept of organized law enforcement to solve organized crime. We are dealing with attacks on major high value targets in Germany. From these attacks, the damage that we calculated is 14.5 million. Emotet became more and more sophisticated on spying on people's personal data. In other cases, when you want to take down a botnet, you can just, you know, seize a domain and shut the whole thing down. This is not possible because of the uh, technical aspects of that botnet. Emotet also pioneered this model of crafting hundreds of different variations on boring-looking spam messages that would 
lull you into a false sense of security that it was okay to just click the link or open the document that was attached to those spam messages. It was moving around without being even noticed and try to um, imitate your writing that's spreading itself to colleagues and to all the um, contacts in your mailing list. It's a measure of Emma Tet's success that they were as big as they were and were able to uh, continue going in this way for many years. Some of these attacks devastated small businesses. Construction contracting companies that had five employees that got hit with ransomware and lost all their accounts. They lost all of their um, documentation for the work that they were doing. They got fired from their jobs and they couldn't get any more work. I do know that there was at least one death. Our main point was to guarantee the patient safety. And our first thoughts were uh, maybe to evacuate the whole clinic, but to evacuate a hospital within a few hours, the real risk for the patients would be greater than the theoretical risk of this attack. First, we called our rescue control center in the region to stop delivering us new accident and emergency patients. About 100 to 150 patients were delivered to our other hospitals. We had about 1,000 medical devices, and because we could not guarantee they work uh, very well, we switched to paper documentation. During wars, a red cross on the roof of hospitals protects them from any bombing, but I think that in cyber war there is no convention to protect hospitals. When I learned that the lights went out literally in the ER of a hospital they had attacked, uh, that was it. That sort of crossed that line that is not to be crossed, endangering thousands of lives. I kind of changed my attitude and it made me want to go after them more than I already did before. It certainly takes more people to clean up the mess of cybercrime than, uh, than the people who cause it. If you look at a building or a regular house, it's much easier to throw a stone through the window and it breaks, it's maybe 30 seconds of work. But to put in a new window, somebody has to manufacture the window, uh, somebody has to place it in there, uh, some repainting has to be done. So in the Emotet case, at a certain moment, the uh, criminals decided to move uh, some important servers in this infrastructure from Russia to the Netherlands. We think it has to do with the internet connection. The speed's quite good, it's relatively cheap, so that attracts a lot of legal companies basically to host their facilities, uh, but unfortunately also that attracts a lot of uh, criminal infrastructures. The Dutch National Police identified that two of the three primary servers being used to uh, to manage the Emotet botnet were located inside the Netherlands. The Dutch police have this uh, new law that we can basically hack into systems. And I think in this investigation, this was one of the big advantages that we had. The better um, suspects are in what they are doing, uh, the longer it takes until they make a mistake that opens up the lead you can follow. We saw a couple of glitches over the time and they made a mistake here and there, minor ones that finally all added up. They were very secure about their botnet and about their business, but you could say they were not so secretive about the use of social media. The information we got from those glitches combined with searches on social media led to identifying one of our suspects. When you look for a place to test a weapon, when you look for a place to create conflict, the place that you hide conflict is in the middle of other conflict. The Ukraine is a location where conflict already exists. Ясна річ, враховуючи ситуацію, що на даний час склалася на теренах нашої держави, є велика кількість осіб, які намагаються 
отримати кошти не зовсім в легальний спосіб та намагаються використовувати свої знання та вміння не в професійній, не в такій легальній сфері. Говорячи відносно такої, чи вважаємо ми Україну як такою тихою гаванью для хакерів, хочемо сказати, що ні. We had built up a couple of operational centers at Europol, at Eurojust, and in each country involved. If I was uh, sitting in the operational center at the BKA, the German Federal Police, just watching a dashboard, the numbers on that dashboard were supposed to go up when the infected computers would start to talk to our infrastructure. And, um, you know, the clock ticked, and finally we uh, realized that the Ukrainian colleagues were good to go. Ясна річ, що для кіберполіції дана реалізація та зазначений Action Day був одним з найбільш знаковим, тому що аналогічного роду операцій правоохоронні органи України та кіберполіція в минулому не проводила. Ми встановили певний перелік серверів, які призвели нас до великої кількості кінцевих точок, тобто абонентів. Вже згодом, аналізуючи зв'язки цих людей, які використовували IP-адреси, ми встановили, що всі ці комп'ютери стосувалися однієї людини. People who live on the internet sometimes don't pay attention to things that matter in the physical world. One of the things that just made me chuckle a little bit was the fact that in one shot, the camera frame moved past the computer that was on the criminal's desk. And it was just this old tower PC, it had the case removed, and there was like toys and things and stickers stuck to it. Сам перед здивувало те, що вказаний адміністратор не використовував шифрування. Це досить дивно для мене. Тобто вся інформація, яка зберігалась в нього на комп'ютері та на серверах, доступна для аналізу. Звісно, розуміла, що вона робить, але вона не здогадувалася, що правоохоронні органи України за підтримкою правоохоронних органів іноземних держав зможуть безпосередньо його вистежити та дійсно знайти доказову базу для притягнення його до кримінальної відповідальності. It was an incredible feeling. All that time, um, every single member of that group had invested in the last month. Um, it just paid off, you know. And even when I saw that we uh, were reaching thousands of bots, they <laughs> kind of make a squeakish noise because, you know, it's like all the pressure just uh, fell off us. And it, it's been just an amazing collaboration. The reason the law enforcement officials involved in this organizational investigative cooperation were successful is because they finally started thinking outside the box. They started thinking like hackers and figuring out that if what they wanted to do was good and right and just and illegal where they were, go find a place that wasn't illegal. Is this the last of Emotet? I don't, I don't think so. I think it, they, maybe it's not going to be strictly Emotet under that name, under that branding, under that idea. But I, I think we might have just been knocking some things down and maybe it'll just get right back up. We're the little Dutch boy trying to put our fingers in all the cracks in the dam constantly in the security industry and new cracks are always forming. There's never one point you can reach where you can say, great, we've got it sussed here. Um, I think it's always a question of ongoing risk assessment. You know, where are we? What resources do we have? Who might want to target them? How? And from that, build out what your defenses are. So it's an, it's an ongoing process.
My message to cyber criminals is that nobody's untouchable and that we will hunt them down uh, if we put our efforts in it. If you want to host your facility somewhere, maybe not in the Netherlands, because then the high-tech crime unit will get on your ass. Не используйте шифрование, это очень хорошо. Я бы хотел бы им сказать, чтобы они не пользовались VPN и заходили со своих домашних IP-адресов. The heat is on. Whisper, come on. I really hope you're not allergic to cats, dude.